I've seen multiple people this week posting about how their churches are hosting baby showers for pregnant single moms or events for single moms. And that's great. Like, thank you for the diapers. But if you really want to make an impact on a single mom's life, pay our rent for a month. Help out with an electricity bill. Help us out with daycare for a month. Like, maybe help provide free or cheaper daycare. Um, I don't know. There are just a lot of ways to really make an impact on a single mom's life. And I'm just so tired of the save the children crowd wanting a pat on the back for handing out some freaking diapers. Pay my rent for a month. So I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine about my journey being like single, single now. Like I've officially been single for like several months now. And this is like the first time ever in my entire life. Like I was always in relationships back to back to back, going from like one boyfriend to the next boyfriend to getting married to broken up to situationship. Like I've always had kind of somebody there. Why you fail? Gentlemen, welcome back to another video of single mothers dating after divorce, after having children, after making so many mistakes. Now, let's watch this one again, gentlemen, and let's comment on it. I've seen multiple people this week posting about how their churches are hosting baby showers for pregnant single moms or events for single moms. And that's great. Like, thank you for the diapers. But if you really want to make an impact on a single mom's life, pay our rent for a month. Help out with an electricity bill. Help us out with daycare for a month. Like, maybe help provide free or cheaper daycare. Um... I don't know. There are just a lot of ways to really make an impact on a single mom's life. And I'm just so tired of the save the children crowd wanting a pat on the back for handing out some freaking diapers. Pay my rent for a month. What a narcissist a-hole this woman is, guys. So, you know, the, the, the church has to provide more. Daycare centers and probably babysitters have to get paid less, you know, for her to be comfortable. And just people on the street, when they see a single mother, hey, do you want your rent paid instead of mine? You know, I'm not going to pay my rent. I'm going to pay yours because you're a single mother and you're just such a beautiful creature. And I should totally pay for the mistakes that you've brought upon your life. You know, just everybody, whole society, let's kiss these women's behind. Let's provide for them, pay their rents. You know, just they deserve it, guys. What a load of bullcrap. You've made your mistakes by your own. You picked the wrong partner or, you know, or even if he cheated, which in this case, I'm 100% sure he didn't. But even if the man cheats, uh, bad luck, you know, step up and provide for your child. Okay, life is not easy. It's hard for some people to understand, especially for women, because they have been granted everything for free. Uh, but yeah, life is not easy. You know, just step up and do what you have to do. But in this woman's case, of course, she just made the bad choices because you know, can clearly see from her uh, IQ level being lower than, you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> the temperature right now. We can clearly see what is the problem. But let's continue, guys. Pay my rent for a month. So I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine about my journey being like single, single now. Like I've officially been single for like several months now. And this is like the first time ever in my entire life. Just mentioned in my latest video how women spend like two months not being shaken up by somebody and they immediately post it on TikTok like it's been two months. It, it, it's been two months without people feeding me attention and they still have like 500 dudes on their DMs. Even, you know, like they, <laughs> as Taylor mentions, the word loneliness should mean something different for men and women. Like some guys spend alone seven years and they don't mention it. While this girl right here spent two or three months alone and now she's like already shaking. Like I was always in relationships back to back to back, going from like one boyfriend to the next boyfriend to getting married to broken up to situationship. Like I've always had kind of somebody there. And so Wifey material, eh? So me being a single woman and being um, like happy with myself and growing in myself and knowing myself more it's like certain things that i would have normally looked completely past i'm repelled by now and one of those things is like that hot and cold personality type 
This is that guy that you know that sometimes when he sees you, he's like, hey, what's up, blah, 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 blah. He seems really excited to talk to you and you guys are having amazing conversations and he seems really cool. And then other times you see him and it's like, you're not even there or whatever he's dealing with is like of utmost importance and he can't even really say hi. And obviously people, you know, are going through stuff. People have days when it's like, they just don't feel like talking or whatever. But if this is a consistent pattern, this is what I'm talking about. Like regularly, you don't know whether you're gonna get like out of the box, hey, what's up, blah, 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 like very warm, or you're gonna get super cold. And it's like this personality type, when I was younger, I'd be like, well, are you okay? Like, what do, what do you need? Do you need something? Do you wanna talk, blah, 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 blah. Now as a grown woman in my 30s, I'm just like, if you can't communicate, like just turn the other way, like just don't even talk to me. Like if you're having a bad day, you can say that. If you're consistently having bad days over and over and over again, where you constantly have to be hot and cold, like that is not attractive to me. Like okay, it's absolutely okay to not be attractive for you. Then why did you choose that type of personality for the last 10 years? You know, that is my question. If you don't like it, why did you chase the guys and have relationships and situationships and conversationships and all that crap with the guys that were, quote unquote, emotionally unavailable? Because you were attracted to them. It's sad, guys, it's sad, but this is how it is. Most women nowadays, they don't value a guy with morals. They don't value a guy with principles, a stable guy who knows what he wants and is planning ahead for the future. They don't like it. They, they call it boring. What they like is that guy who smokes all day and drinks and doesn't do anything with his life and is just just happens to be attractive and you know also has a lot of options so well you know the consequences are on you like it is not attractive to me that you're acting like a 14 year old girl who just got her period for the first time i need consistency i need stability like that roller coaster of having me go up and down and up and down and up and down i i cannot stand that now the second i and not stand that now is the key word because if you didn't stand it throughout your life at this point you'd probably be married with a few kids you know what i mean guys uh, but you could stand it there uh, then you know back then in, in in fact you were attracted to that you were actively chasing that and not giving good guys a chance but going to the bad boys it's like man i i cannot understand why we won't do this i really can't guys I see that somebody's personality, I'm just like, oh no, I can't. This is not just with men, this is with, you know, your homegirls as well. If they're constantly on a, you know, yo-yo, emotional roller coaster, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like, that's gonna cause you stress and drama as their friend. But this is just one, like, personality type or whatever that I just, I have no tolerance for anymore. Well, hello, TikTok friends and family. Um, it's been a while since I've recorded a video to tell you how my life is going, but somebody asked this question on one of my other videos, so I thought I would answer it for everyone because it's a pretty loaded question. Um, things are okay. My divorce was final in March after a year of being separated. Of course, he moved in with another woman after six months of separation. Anyway, in April, I started dating a guy and um, it was amazing, like right from the beginning, treated me like a princess, just like I, one of the best relationships I've ever had, honestly. I got sucked in and then I noticed that every so often, I would do something small and he would get triggered and flip a switch and go from being this nice, gentle, caring guy to um, calling me names, telling me to F off, and then breaking up with me. Um, and then a couple days later, it would be like everything was fine. And this kept happening. But the good times were so good that I kept staying. Uh, I started moving stuff into his house. And every time this occurred again, where he broke up with me, I would have to move stuff out of his house, then back into his house. Just a really toxic cycle. Um, and <laughs> the last straw was this past week. Before she continues, gentlemen, what do you think is the reason for her to stay in that relationship even though she admits it was extremely toxic she had to move and pack all her things from his place you know do that several times they break up they go back again you know it just seems really toxic from the outside so why do you think that she was so insistent in continuing that relationship 
It's because the lows were really low, but the highs were also high. She is addicted to anxiety. She likes the, the roller coaster. You know, the good moments that are really good for her are enough uh, to, you know, go through the bad ones over and over. So she doesn't like stability. You know, these sort of women, guys, they don't understand it, but they they don't give good guys a chance. Good guys, as I have mentioned, who happen to be more stable and don't give you that roller coaster all the time, they find them boring. They, they think that life has to be this constant, uh, you know, just feeling 10 out of 10, constant emotions all the time. No, why? You know, to give you an analogy with food, for example... Uh, you don't have to eat all the time the most greasy and unhealthy things just because they happen to be more salty or sweeter or just more greasy than other foods, you know? Like people who keep a diet know that healthy food, it's not disgusting, it's, it's still delicious, but it's less stimulating, right? It's not like healthy food is disgusting, it's just le less stimulating uh, than eating a, a greasy burger that has 2,000 calories. You know what I mean? So in the same way, guys, th there are some people who, who cannot control themselves and cannot stop eating unhealthy stuff because it's more stimulating. It's the same with these women. You know, they don't give good guys a chance because they are like healthy food. They are good for them, uh, but they, they don't have that edge, you know? They don't have... The, the spark is not there, the glitter, all that bullcrap they mention. They are just addicted in the same way that a person is addicted to unhealthy food. And it just shows weakness. It shows that you cannot control yourself and you cannot make the good decisions for your life. Week, um, he took my daughter and myself and some friends to Hawaii because my daughter is going to college there. So he took us there to take her to college, uh, get her dorm room set up. And... The second night we were there, he freaked out again because I was paying more attention to my daughters than to him. Um, called me a stupid bitch, told me to get the f out of the room, um, broke up with me yet again, and booked a plane ticket for the next day. So he basically left me and my daughters there in Hawaii and went back home. Obviously, that was the last straw. It should have been the last straw a long time ago, but, um, you know, you can f me, but don't mess with my daughters. Don't mess with their happiness. So, uh, super controlling narcissist, I know now. I seem to attract them. Uh, I changed the name on my TikTok. There we have that word again, guys. I seem to attract them. Women always speak so passively. I attract bad things or bad things happen to me or I have bad luck and they just as mentioned guys previously on previous videos accountability is women's kryptonite they don't want to be accountable they don't want to accept that they've made a mistake because it exposes them it exposes their weakness and it shows that they were the problem all along account because now there's more flying monkeys out there looking for me and watching everything I do so but I can only go up from here so thank you Chad, for asking and um it'll just get better spoiler it won't it won't guys because again a lot of people sympathize with single mothers and I can sort of sympathize with their situation it's not easy you know uh, that's for sure uh but in most cases, I have no sympathy because these single mothers, guys, they're not widows, all right? Or they're not women who chose a good person who then turned out to be a bad person who did a 180 on the relationship, you know? Uh, no, it's, in most of the cases, single mothers are just women who make a bad choice for whom to start a re relationship with, right? On the first place, then they go through a bad marriage where both sides are a-holes, or in some of the cases, the guy is good, right? They chose a good guy, uh, but they, you know, they left him behind because they want something more exciting or they want a bad boy or whatever. Like, I tell you guys, I, I checked the statistics for a previous video and it's like 50% of single mothers have never been married. You know, we're talking about women 
who who just had that one fun night with Char and they became single mothers and then Char just eventually showed up for the year a few times then you know he he didn't care anymore like another 30 percent was divorced and keeping in mind that women initiate 70 percent of the divorces you can see where that comes from it's women who want just a better patch of green grass you know they're looking for the next best thing and then like another 20 percent if i recall uh, 10 something like that percent was a woman who are not divorced but separated you know single mothers and then like only two percent of single mothers or something along the the two percent right were actually widows like guys most single mothers it's really on them right it's not bad luck it's not they that they attract bad people no they actively do those decisions they start from a young age with high body counts uh, you know unable to maintain maintain relationships unable to keep a man then they go for the bad boy because they cannot differentiate between good and bad men they marry him and then divorce him or, or they just um marry a simp who can actually take care of her but then divorce like it, it's all on them guys is what i'm trying to say but thank you for watching guys leave me your comments down below and i'll be happy to see you next time have a good one